Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting continuation of our All About Nodes in DaVinci Resolve series, we're going to be tackling the mysterious layer and parallel nodes. These are ones I get asked about all the time, so without further ado, let's hop into DaVinci Resolve and get started. Here we've got our same footage of April Renzilla at the piano, but you can notice that we are in DaVinci Resolve 12 now. Luckily, nodes work exactly the same way, so we can get right into this. Here we've already got our default first corrector node, and let's get a quick primary grade going on here just because why not. So we're going to hop over here, just bump up the contrast a bit, perfect, scoot our pivot around, neat, up the saturation some. Cool. And now we have something nice to look at. So if you remember from last time, we're going to hit Alt-S to create a new corrector node. And then to create a parallel node, you can hit Alt-P. And here you see it creates another corrector node right below our previous one, as well as this parallel combiner node right here, which is very cool. You can also add a parallel node by right-clicking in the node viewer, going to add node and then parallel. But you'll notice that this one only has one input. If you want to add more inputs, it's super easy. Right-click, add one input, right-click, add one input. If you want to be even faster and use your keyboard shortcuts, you can click on a node inside of your existing parallel tr structure and then just hit Alt-P to your heart's content and you'll just keep creating nodes below. So now before we get into actually sort of grading with this, let's take a look at what it does. So before we get into actually grading, let's talk a little bit about how a parallel node works. So what it does is each of these nodes is taking the information from this previous node. And like we said last time, each of these corrector nodes acts basically like an adjustment layer in Photoshop or After Effects. But since they're nodes, they can each read from the same source. So uh, this is how nodes start to become a little more powerful than layers in a certain way. So with layers, it'd all sort of be in serial, you know, one on top of the other. So this node would be processing the data from this node, and this node would be processing the data from this node. But here, they can both be getting from the same node, which is really great. So that's all fine and dandy. Then we get to the parallel node, and this is sort of the magic. And that's how they combine these two processes. And that's how the parallel and the layer nodes are really different. So to see how the parallel node works, let's do our sort of classic example here. Click on the top one, add a circle window, move it around a bit. Click on the bottom one, add a circle window, move it around a bit. And now we're going to change the offset of these and see how the two combine. So we'll make this one sort of bluey, tealy. Make this one yellowy. And you'll see, just like magic, in the middle, click away so you can see easier, you know, it's blue on this side, yellow on this side, but it's green in the middle. So you can see these two adjustments combine together instead of layering on top of each other like a layer would do. And now we'll do a quick grade using this, and I'll show you how to use that. But before we do that, we will make a quick version of this because we'll be coming back to this example when we talk about layer nodes in just a second. So, boom, new version. We'll call this example. And now we're looking good. So to do a quick grade, let's just, let's just turn off that and reset this. And we will turn off that and reset this. So what I normally do grading wise with parallel nodes is do a lot of secondary corrections all at once that I want to be able to sort of flow together nicely. So my sort of typical go-to is to create a vignette in one. So just do that real quick. And we'll soften this guy out. And we'll invert it and bring the gamma down. Sweet vignette, bro. Not really, but it'll work. And then over on the one below it, I'll normally create another circle window and I'll highlight the subject's face or whatever, you know, needs to be highlighted. So there's that. It's looking fine for a tutorial and increase the softness and bring the gamma up a smidge and the lift down. Gain up. Nice. That looks good enough. And now this way, whenever we track this clip real fast, you'll see that our face highlight gets affected by the vignette very naturally as opposed to sort of layering on top of it and cutting it out and also since we're all reading from this first node's data it's not having to process through this vignette whenever it's tracking which is super nice and makes things a little bit more accurate so now let's see how a layer node works so now let's hop back into our clips load version one and now all we have to do to change this parallel node into a layer mixer is right click and do morph into layer mixer node and boom you see that right there how these now overlap on top of each other so this bottom adjustment is sort of like a top layer where it's masking over the other one so this is really handy for stuff like preserving skin tones uh, if you've seen in my preserving skin tones in extreme grades video link boonk, right there also if you don't want to morph your layer mode by right-clicking there. You can also hit Alt-L, just like we do Alt-P in the layer nodes, and go up to Node, 
add layer node, right click, add node, layer. It works. Everything works exactly the same as the parallel node. It's super handy, easier to remember. So now to get a feel for how the layer mixer works, if you don't want to watch my tutorial on preserving skin tones in extreme grades, we're going to do it again. So right there, is, we've got that loaded. And we'll scoot this over. Let's get Shift Z to get this back to where it goes. And in this top node, we will turn off this. Bottom node, we will turn off this. So what we'll do for this is just add a quick LUT and active radio will be cool. And now, so we want to preserve these skin tones a bit. What we can do is click on our bottom node, hit shift eight so we can see what's going on here. And just real quick drag over the skin tones. We'll make it a nice, big, nasty, loose selection. And we'll quick clean the whites a bit and we'll blur a bit. Hopefully that'll be decent enough. Then what we'll do is hit Shift H and see nothing has happened. Why has nothing happened? Because we're still in a parallel node. Right click on this, hit Layer Mixer, and now you can see we've got skin tones coming through very nicely. And say that this is a little bit too dramatic, we'll just go to our key tab and dial it back. Do the same thing with the LUT, and I've got something looking pretty nice. So, layer nodes and parallel nodes. Super great, super handy, make people think you're really smart, and they make your life a lot easier. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you'd like to give it a like, if you didn't give it a dislike, no matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. If you appreciate this stuff I do, go to meastermedia.com slash products and pick up some cool stuff there. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Meester Media YouTube channel. We've got part three of this coming out soon, I'm sure. If you want even more Meester Media goodness, we've got links for our socials down in the description below. Be sure to share this video with your friends also so that they can have their questions answered about layer and parallel nodes. Once again, I've been Theo with Meester Media. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.